to our big story this morning for the first time since her death. A grieving Commonwealth gets its first chance to say a personal goodbye to Queen Elizabeth. Her coffin left Balmoral Sunday on what was an emotional, historic journey through the Scottish hillside. Jay Gray is live right now in London with a closer look at the trip and what comes next. And Jay, it's a big day here. Yeah, it really is, Maureen. A lot unfolding this morning. We just heard for the first time in his first address to Parliament as monarch, King Charles III talking in the building just behind us here, Parliament, and saying at one point, I cannot help but feel the weight of history which surrounds us. This, of course, as his mother has lied in rest overnight in Scotland, her trip there from her beloved uh, summer estate, lined by tens of thousands wanting to say thank you, say one last goodbye. Queen Elizabeth leaves her beloved Balmoral for the last time. The Scottish standard draped across her black oak coffin, topped with a wreath of fresh cut plants and flowers, her favorites, from her cherished summer estate. Her son, now King Charles III, calls this winding trip through the Scottish Highlands her last great journey. Framed by tens of thousands, in some areas 15 deep, with flags and flowers drawn to roadsides in towns and villages along the way. Just important to say goodbye. Um, she's been on the throne for a long time. So. Even as the cortege turns south to Edinburgh, drivers leave their cars on the side of the motorway to pay their respects. While across the UK and Commonwealth, proclamation ceremonies acknowledge Charles III and the start of a new reign. King, head of the Commonwealth, defender of the faith, to whom we do acknowledge all faith and obedience with humble affection. But right now, affection here is reserved for their queen. She's been that rock, that stability from through the world wars, through the cold wars, through COVID. She was our constant. More than 70 years of dedication and service to a grateful and grieving nation. And we have heard this morning for the first time since her death from her grandson, Harry, the prince, uh, writing just a glowing tribute to his grandmother, closing, and I want to read this to you with the words, you were already sorely missed, not just uh, by us, but by the world over. And as it comes to first meetings, we now honor my father in his new role as King Charles III. Thank you for your commitment to service. Thank you for your sound advice. Thank you for your infectious smile. We too smile knowing that you and Grandpa are reuni reunited now and both together in peace. Obviously, uh, Maureen, they were, they were very close. Yeah, so touching. And Jay, this period of public mourning quickly shifts to London ahead of her funeral. Is that right? Yeah, it really does. 24 hours of a public vigil there in Scotland, and then she flies here. The Royal Air Force will bring her coffin here, uh, where it will be uh, over uh, at Buckingham Palace, uh, first then moving over to Westminster, and, and there will be a public viewing here. Tens of thousands uh, expected to line up. They have already warned those who want to be a part of that public uh, viewing. You may have to spend the night overnight in line to get inside. Just incredible. And we know this is one of many commemorations, ceremonies that we will be seeing over in London throughout the coming weeks. Yeah. Jay Gray, live for us in London. Thank you so much for that update.